Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of these little guys right here. These are the tactile turn bolt action pens. Um, but first off, in the name of full disclosure, I gotta let you know that these guys were sent along to me by Tactile Turn themselves. You know, I've, I, I've done a bunch of reviews of Tactile Turn before, including of, of the predecessor of this little guy, and uh, sometime back, Tactile Turn reached out to me and said, hey Nick, I know you didn't care for the original bolt action they did, the slider and glider, but I'd love for you to see the new version. Um, and he sent it along for me. I told I want to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Might be a gem, might be junk. Um, but he still sent it along. Honestly, given the first review, that takes some stone, so I respect that. But anyways, um, we have to assume these are the very, very best quality controlled pens here ever, and uh, I'm doing my best not to let the fact that these guys were sent along as review samples uh, to color my review or the whole, or uh, color my uh, view on the whole item. So uh, anyways, there you go, full disclosure. Next thing, size comparison. Um, here it is against a couple of standard everyday carry sorts of pens. This is the pocket jotter, right? Right here, uh, we have a big click stick sort of pen, and so you can see that uh, relative to the, it's actually a little bit shorter, uh, the small one that is, relative to the big uh, here, and then in terms of overall length, we're actually not that far apart uh, from the original one. Here is a Pilot G2 pen, so again, the main body of the pen is about the size of the short one. The full size is about the size of a G2, which makes sense, because it takes a G2 cartridge, and then here it is against the Twisby Eco, and then finally, the Urban Survival Gear High Scribe Bolt, which is another bolt action action style pen, although this uses a very different mechanism in some ways. Um, but this is one that I recommend very, very often on the channel. So there you go. Um, so th that's your size comparison. Then finally, as I mentioned, these guys are a sequel. Well, I guess they are sequels. Um, these uh, were previously the last generation of bolt action pens from Tactile Turn were called the Slider and the Glider. I had the review of one of them up there. I can't remember for the life of me which one it was. I think it was a glider or something like that. Um, but they had originally it had a mechanism that had sort of a C-shape to it, right? You can watch my full review of, the, of that one. Um, and honestly, the mechanism just didn't work all that well. It just it wasn't a great pen. All told, it was one of the least compelling uh, bolt-action pens out there, even though I've liked tactile turn stuff a lot in the past. Um, but he's gone ahead and he's made a new version of that, uh, a new bolt-action pen, just referred to this time as the bolt action and the bolt action short um and so that's what we've got going on here so let's go on ahead and jump into the good the great the bad the ugly these very interesting little pens right here so on the good side, to start with, I do love the fact that he changed the names. Look, I, you know, uh, cute product names can be, well, cute, but at the end of the day, if I can't remember which one is which, and Slider and Glider gives me no size information, it's a little bit frustrating. So nice job. Next thing, um, this guy, there are actually a bunch of different material choices out there. You can get these in brass, in copper, in titanium. So this is in titanium, this is in a brass, or maybe it's a bronze, I'm sorry. Um, and you can also get, for each one of them, a thumb stud that is regular, as this guy is right here, or a thumb stud that is made of a material called Dimascus. Um, Dimascus being, well, uh, a titanium Damascus, basically a pattern welded titanium. And so you can get that little stud made out of either the regular titanium or out of the, uh, the, the Dimascus there. That's kind of a neat little detail. But this allows you a bunch of options in terms of your personal aesthetic. Um, and I, I like that very much. You also get a choice of refill size. Uh, well, a choice of pen size overall, which comes with it a choice of refill size. So I'll go ahead and pull out this rubber band here to pop the uh, edge off there. We'll talk about that in a second here. But um, this guy here, the small one is using a Schmidt Easy Flow at least from the factory, uh, Parker style refill. That means you can also use the Parker Quink gel refill that I actually am a big fan of, generally speaking. There we go. Um, and the little, or I'm sorry, the big guy here is using a Pilot G2 refill, uh, which is a very, very nice refill. Um, I, you can also use a Mont Blanc refill, actually, uh, Mont Blanc, sorry. Um, if you can use one of their rollerball, the fine line of things, just by kind of, uh, sanding the top off it. I've got a, a video about, actually, well, actually, exactly how to do all of that. So that's a uh, that's a beautiful thing. Um, if you want a really really nice riding rollerball or the fine line of cartridge too, potentially, um, th this gives you that option, which is great, uh, at least to me certainly. Um, so that's very good. Um, you've got those two choices, and those are both very good cartridges, and they're both very easily available cartridges. I mean, at this point, a lot of gas stations sell Pilot G2 pens, and all you, I mean, you can just go to the gas station, right, and you know, buy the damn pen, take it apart, 
and you know you lose 25 cents on the but you know it works beautifully so that's a great thing i very very much like those choices of cartridge because they're very very easily available next thing um these guys have a very nice clip on them both of them do and in fact it appears to be the same clip which i'm totally fine with um but it has a nice little bit of ramp on there it's got some nice pull to it um it's just it is overall a great clip i had absolutely no problem with this guy staying in my pocket um you know i carried this guy actually on a uh, on a recent trip and i carried it in my pocket where my knife would normally be just because well i had nothing else there right and at least it makes my pockets weigh the right thing because you know didn't check a bag anyways i'm insane but that's beside the point um but this pocket this clip kept it in my pocket exactly where i wanted it to be and that is a, a great thing i like that very very much um so it's just it's a good clip overall next thing the tip fit is really good on this that's a silly thing to talk about but in another level it isn't right you want a pen to have for whatever refill it's using you want there to be very little gap around the outside of it there the reason you want that is because you want to be, as you're writing here, let me grab a fresh sheet of paper here, as you're writing with this little guy, you want to be able to not have a whole lot of, uh, you know, sort of movement. If I say, you know, hey, everybody, and the tip of the pen is kind of waggling around in there, like, you know, ding, 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 that's the sound it'll make in micro or something. But anyways, uh, you don't want that waggle around in there, and this has eliminated that. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, So that's good. Next thing, the bolt action on this is on point. What I mean by that is this is a very easy bolt action. The first generation, the slider and glider, honestly weren't. Um, it, it was very much a fine motor thing. I'm sure I could have gotten past it. And a lot of people did like those pens, but for me, there were lots of really good bolt action actions, and there were some that are really frustrating. This one is very good, because really, it's not at all a um, it's not at all a fine motor thing. All I need to do is really pull down, and by pulling down on it, it will naturally disengage it. And similarly, if I want to disengage, right, it'll naturally engage it. And if I want to disengage, I just push down and it will naturally slide back the other way because it's got these little slopes here on the curve. Um, just pulling down will engage it. Just pulling down will disengage it. So really, there's not even a pull to one side. There's no laterality. It's just like, boom, it's down it's down. And compare this to, for instance, and I like this pen very much, but the Urban Survival gear here, if I just press down, it stops. There's nothing else happening. I have to actually make a sideways motion. And that kind of makes sense with the clip being what it is here, but this is a uh, this is a different approach. I like very much this curve, because um, it just makes it very, very easy to use. This is a great intuitive bolt-action system, and has gone from being, I think, one of the lesser bolt-action systems in the slider and glider to one of the better ones out there in the market right now. Um, Next thing, the price on these guys, I think is actually fine. So I wrote most of this review on a plane at about 40,000 feet, right? And I had the pen in front of me there. And I, you know, I was, I was sitting there and I was brainstorming because I didn't pay for Wi-Fi because, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah freaking delta anyways i digress um the, 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 but i would i didn't know what the price was and so i was kind of writing the review and thinking to myself okay what would the price have to be and honestly i anticipated these guys being a little more expensive than i uh, than they are this guy as configured with the timascus stud which adds about 20 bucks is uh, 119 bucks um the, the the small one as configured is 99 bucks now look that's not a trivial amount of money to spend on the pen at that point you were into some higher end territory particularly with things like fountain pens you can get like a pilot vanishing point around that price point so if you want something to write even nicer than any of these refills will, then you can definitely do better. However, at the same time, that's a just fine thing because this is a really, really nicely done pen. And in fact, that brings us to the next point here, which is that even for that price, there were a lot of good details. So you get things, for instance, like the fact that the clip here is not actually, there's not like a wafer that the clip is attached to. On many pens, uh, do I have one like that? Yeah, here. You can see the pocket jaw to the clip attaches to a ring that goes all the way around the pen. Here, the clip is actually inside the pen. There's a little groove that's cut out there. It's a little thing, but it's a nice little thing. Similarly, you get this nice chamfer on the outside of the track here, which means that there is just zero possible way to cut yourself or hurt yourself. This is an entirely smooth thing. I can run my finger along this little area with absolutely no concern. Also, the curvature of that track is a seriously brilliant thing. Um, it's been, I believe there were other bolt actions that have done similarly before, but the way that this curvature has been designed really does have that consequence of making it super, super easy to use, super intuitive, and it's almost hard not to open it or close it depending on where you are. It's very, very good in that way, so that little curvature is great. Um, the th stud on it is well done. You can see here that it is chamfered on the top here. I'll zoom, zoom in there. Here, I'll show you on this guy. This will be a little easy to see. You can see here there is a chamfer on the top that is actually, if not polished, it's certainly a nice finish. Um, and then to the side there, there's a flat area. Then there's another chamfer on the bottom. Then a, 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 a smaller area in the middle there. And then it kind of secures into the inner spot there. Look, nice. 
just nicely done. That's a lot more detail than they needed to do. Well, actually, no, I think that's a right the amount of, or around the right amount of detail, but it's a good detail that they've done there. Um, you have a very nice matching of the barrel here. Um, you know, you can see here where the barrel separates. Actually, wait, no, you can't. And in fact, when I was first looking at this thing, I was thinking, how the heck do you open this guy up? But then if you do a little bit of twisting, you can see it appears and then it disappears. That's a good detail. Oh, that's nice. Um, and you get the nice uh, rounded tips, for instance, on the, the back of it here. This is just nice. A little bit of polishing up there. Um, this is, look, overall, this is just a really nice pen. Both of these guys are just absolutely excellent pieces. You put this in somebody's hand, and they're like, oh, that's nice. That's fancy. That's pretty. And I support that very, very much. So, to me, at least, those are the good things. It's got some very nice details to it. Um, and it's got a price that I think is actually better than I expected it to be, given the quality that you see in here. The bolt action is really, really good. This is a great bolt action layout compared to the other. Oh, man, that's an improvement. Um, as a great fit at the tip, nice clip, good choice of materials here. A couple of different sizes, which is a great thing. And uh, they improve names and, you know, it just, yeah, it's a good thing. Um, on the great side, the texture on this is awesome. This is really hard to demonstrate to somebody. This is something where if you just look at it on camera here, I'll try and zoom in to see if you can see it a little bit better. What we actually have here are very tiny little scores in this. If that, It almost looks like he did like a scratch pass or something like that with some kind of a, uh, a lathe tool. And it just kind of put in this very, very tiny little pattern. Um, It's very tactile and tactile turn, right? but it feels good in the hand. It's not like sharp. It's not like annoying in any way, shape, or form, but it gives you absolutely perfect grip on this guy. This is very easy to grab out of your pocket. It, it prevents sliding in this direction, but it's just, it's a good texture. It's really, really freaking nice, and it hides this barrel junction beautifully, and frankly, it just looks amazing. I handed this knife, or this knife, I'm sorry, I review a lot of knives. I handed this uh, guy to a lot of people uh, on the course of my trip, just like, what do you think? And they were like, oh, wow, that's a nice freaking pen. Um, and so that's really a, a nice texture. I think to me that's what's great is this texture is just really, really well done. And especially given that so much of a bolt action pen depends on pushing downwards, this tactile, uh, well, the tactile turning, if you will, um, really works well. So that to me is what's great. On the bad side, a couple of things. Start with the brass is a little bit on the heavier side. Um, I'll go ahead and throw these guys on a scale real quick. Um, we can see here, this guy's coming in at 1.23 ounces. This big guy in brass is coming in at two, about two ounces, 1.96 ounces. Um, this is certainly a lot heavier. The brass is a little bit heavy. I imagine copper is going to be probably even worse. Um, so if you're looking for a lightweight pen, brass is not going to be your option. Or uh, bronze, I'm sorry. It's not going to be an option. This color, the yellow one, is not going to be a very good option for you. Um, so you want to keep that one in mind. Next thing, the top cap on this guy. Um, given how flush, basically, this bottom part is, it was almost a little disappointing to me that the top part wasn't as well. Um, I understand that that might be harder to fit and whatnot, but, um, you know, I, I would like to see that to be, you know, as flush on the top here as it is down at the bottom. That is the world's biggest nitpick. It has literally no effect on it, but I think that would just complete the, uh, the complete the, uh, tie the room together, if you know what I mean. So that's a beautiful thing. Then finally, on the bad side, um, the one thing that is a frustration is that this guy is actually quite hard to unscrew by hand. Um, I, I tried doing this because I was sitting there actually with another uh, another YouTuber, Banta247. He and I are sitting there chatting. I, I got this out. He said, oh, what refill does it use? And I said, actually, I haven't opened it up yet because this was like very shortly after I'd been carrying it. I hadn't done all the background research. I was just interested in how it worked as a pen at that point. And I tried to sit there. I'm sitting here at a restaurant table trying to unscrew this and it just ain't freaking happening because my hands are slipping and whatnot. Um, there is just not that much to grab onto here. This texturing is great on this direction, but very poor in this direction. And in fact, as I was turning, it, I found it was actually, you know, once I got a little bit there, uh, what you can see here is because it's got that nice sharp edge there, um, it is a very sharp little edge in there, and so I was getting little tiny bits of peeling and whatnot on my finger there. So this is not a pen that's very easy to swap the refill on just with bare hands. Um, maybe your hands are different than mine. Maybe, you know, you coat them in freaking... I don't know, you wear a latex glove, you'll have an easier time of it. But nevertheless, um, between the rubber washer that they've got in there to keep that in position and the uh, texturing on this guy, getting that top cap off is actually not, you know, something that's serious business. It's right, easy. Um, if you are a fidgeter, you're going to be doing this in meetings instead of, uh, you know, on disassembling your pen. That may be a good thing for you. So um, there you go. Uh, and actually, one other thing I'll highlight is that the, the action is a little bit loud on a bolt-action pen. You can do it silently. See, listen. 
But if you're in a meeting, this is definitely going to be a little louder than some. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. But anyways, those are the bad things, and there's not much here. The top cap is a little bit hard to get off of there to swap the refill out, but you don't do that that often. The brass is a little bit heavy. The top cap is a little bit separated off, and it can be a little bit louder, but again, that's not a major concern. Overall, this has a lot going on. And now, honestly, that's my final... There's nothing ugly here, so my final conclusion is, honestly, these are great. Um, it is sort of a dressy bolt-action pen. I mean, I don't think anybody will argue that this is a relatively dressy pen. I mean, certainly, uh, it, it's a little bit thick. Uh, thicker than some of your dressy pens. It's not, you know, it still looks like there was a machinist involved rather than a beautiful, you know, designer or something like that. And you could make the like, argument that this guy is the Twisby Classic, by the way, might be a little bit more conventionally classy, but this is a, a dressy pen. It's very easily available. It's got a great texture, great action, and the details on it are really, really well done. It's not the easiest refill swap. The top class is a little bit weird. Uh, the top class, sorry. The top cap is a little bit weird off here. But, you know, honestly, I, this thing is great. I mean, carrying this, it was just like, wow, this is good. This is really good. It's excellent. And in fact, at that price point, it is easily a gem to me. The thing, though, that impresses me most, and the thing that heartens me most, if anything, is the amount of improvement. Like I said, the slider and glider just didn't do it for me at all. I was not a big fan of that pen. Um, it, there were a bunch of little issues with it that just made it like a no. no, no I, I don't think I ever recommended that once. This, I can very, very easily recommend. This is a hit out of the park. And I love seeing this when a good maker takes feedback from the community generally, not just from me. I'm not saying he needed to listen to me. Maybe I'm, well, I'm probably wrong on a bunch of stuff. But nevertheless, he took feedback from the community and he made the product better. This is the kind of iterative improvement that makes a good product turn into something amazing. Or in that case, could make a product I really didn't like turn into one that I really, really do. And I respect the heck out of that, because it takes some honesty with yourself to say, you know what, I can do way better than I did last time, and that's amazing. So um, th th that's kind of my, that's one of the things. One other thing that people have been asking about, another one of the gems on my channel is this guy. This is the Urban Survival Gear TIE Scribe Bolt. This is a pen that is optimally configured for the Pilot G2 refit and uh, a lot of people have been asking, well, Nick, if you're really loving this guy, which one would you want to do? Well, size-wise, it's actually very comparable to this guy, to the, the, the full-size one. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, this one's thicker, etc. This one's uh, heavier, etc., especially because it's bronze. But nevertheless, um, you know, now that I have two major gem bolt-action pens that are really, really good, what do I recommend? Um, both of these are great, and I think both of these are great for different people. Um, this guy, the Urban Survival Gear, is more tool-like. It's thinner, it's more lightweight. This is definitely a pen that is just an absolute no frills, just like I'm getting things done. This is a great pen to do that with. Um, this is a tool, whereas this guy feels more substantial in the hand. It feels prettier. It has a little bit more uh, refill variability because you can get both sides. And, uh, you know, it's if this guy is a tool, this guy is a jewel. Eh? It's a jewel. But anyways, so that's kind of where I land on those. I'm not saying that you should do one or the other or over the other. I'm saying you might even consider doing both. They're both pretty damn good. Uh, but anyways, and this guy is a little bit cheapest. Anyways, I digress. Um, these are really, really great pens. Um, no matter what you want to compare them to, they are really excellent. These are th th probably... I, I don't want to say my favorite bolt-action pen ever, although this may be my very favorite bolt-action gate ever. I like the clip thing. It, it, I, I can't make a strong decision. I may end up owning, I, I will end up owning both of these. Let's be real here. But they're both, they're, they're just excellent. They're really, really good work. Uh, well done, Tactile Turn. If you're looking for a bolt-action pen and you like the aesthetic on this, just freaking do it. You're going to like it. It's going to be great. And uh, there you go. So I hope this has been interesting to you and uh, that you have yourselves a wonderful rest of your day. And sorry, guys, but I got a bolt. Okay. Bye now.